Welcome to the Three Edge Week in Review for the week of September 20th. I'm Fritz Foltz, Chief Investment Strategist, and with me today here again is Steve Cucchiaro, President and Chief Investment Officer at Three Edge Asset Management. Today, along with a brief update of the global capital markets, Steve and I will be discussing the potential risks in the high yield corporate bond market, particularly as the Fed announces its intentions to begin to dial back on its easy monetary policy. Before we get started on that, we'll take a quick look at the global capital markets this week, and it was a rather eventful week. Monday, equity suffered a material downturn. However, in the last half hour of trading, investors stepped in, and you guessed it, they bought the dip. And so Monday's trading ended well above this session's intraday lows. And then equities rallied Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, in spite of the fact that the Federal Reserve, at the conclusion of the FOMC meeting, indicated that they would begin to taper their monthly bond purchases, perhaps as early as November, and even indicated that they could begin to raise interest rates as soon as next year in 2022. Meanwhile, by Friday, the yield on the 10-year U.S. Treasury had risen from 1.30% to as high as 145 as the yield curve steepened in response to the FOMC meeting. So, Steve, as we know, the onset of the global pandemic, you know, Fed policy provided a real strong tailwind for bond issuance from corporations. And so that's fine, except this week, it seems to me that the Fed has been more explicit about their intentions now to start to extract that liquidity uh, from the system. So if you put those two events together, what do investors need to know about the high yield, the corporate high yield bond market in the face of the eventual tightening by the Fed? Well, I think we should all be concerned about the high yield bond market uh, having been inflated tremendously by all this Fed stimulus, by investors feeling less and less risk because they feel like the Fed always has their back and that investors have been willing to lend money to companies, even the lower quality rated companies, uh, known as the high yield bond market. Uh, it yields just barely above those for much safer companies. And so we've had uh, a record issuance of, of high yield bonds. Investors have been willing to snap up an annual rate of a trillion dollars a year worth of these high yield bonds this year. and uh, interest rates have come down to all-time record lows, as you can see on this chart. Uh, these are the yields that investors are willing to accept for lending money to lower quality companies. And you can see over time, when times were shaky, they required more than 20% to uh, lend to a company. And now we're talking about yields uh, at four and even slightly below 4%, uh, which is really extraordinary. So we worry that in in the future, unless interest rates stay at these record low levels, and we never have another recession, so people, so investors aren't worried about companies being able to pay their debt, that we could have a corporate bond bubble that will deflate at some point. So this is a concern. Absolutely. So while we're on the topic of, of high yield uh, debt, there's still a lot of conversation around this Chinese property development firm, Evergrande. And Evergrande actually happens to be the largest Chinese issuer of US dollar denominated high yield debt. And as we know, they're struggling to make to, to uh, you know meet their debt obligations and they've even had to cease operations on a number of their projects in China. Now, I understand it's not a US company and maybe their products will only, I mean their uh, you know their problems will only impact China, but you know I bring it up because this week, Fed Chair Powell was asked a question about it, and he said that, uh, well, there's very little direct U.S. exposure to Evergrande debt, and then reminded me right away of Ben Bernanke testifying to Congress about the subprime mortgage crisis and saying that it was fully contained, which obviously didn't turn out to be uh, the case. So how should we as investors think about this situation with Evergrande? Will it be contained just in China? Or even if it is, will it have other ripple effects, though, in the corporate debt market? Well, I think you bring up a good analogy because even if an investor is not directly invested in Evergrande, which you can think of as the world's most largest and most troubled high yield bond right now, right. Uh, right. 
there are indirect effects that could impact the global economy and the markets in general. Right now, Evergrande could be the canary in the coal mine. And there are many other real estate companies in China that are also highly over leveraged. In China, they have a real estate bubble that dwarfs the real estate bubble we had in our country in 2007 because real estate is almost 30% of all of China's GDP, much bigger than it is in our country. And there's been tremendous over leverage, there's been tremendous overbuilding of, of uh, buildings mm -hmm. and, and cities and so on. And so this has been a problem that's brewing for many, many years, and it's just starting to catch up uh, with the market right now. So we see a problem that's not going to go away right away. Even if they restructure Evergrande to try to minimize damage, there's still plenty of over leverage in the system. And this could mean that China growth will slow as they have to use more and more of their money just to pay off debts. And a slowing growth in the China economy impacts the global economy because ever since the financial crisis, China's economy has been a very important part of overall demand. At the same time, there'll be an emphasis in China to pay more attention to generating positive cash flow so companies can more easily uh, try to pay off all their debts. And this means that uh, companies will have to pass on increased costs in their prices. And since China exports to the world, instead of exporting deflation like they did last decade, they could be exporting inflation. So we see an indirect ripple effect where the problems in China are not going to be all resolved in a few days, but these are long lasting problems. And this can add to the risk of stagflation in the global economy, slower growth along with higher inflation. So we do think this bears watching. And we do think that sometimes, while a direct investment might not be there to, to get a direct uh, negative impact, there could be ripple effects. Even the idea that investors who might be directly investing in Evergrande have to sell other safer investments just to raise liquidity to pay off for their losses. So there are many ways we can have some kind of contagion. And once again, bringing us back to the idea of the interconnection uh, of markets, even when it's not necessarily a direct connection. So that's uh, very, very helpful. So that will do it for Steve and me, but we will be back next week, another edition of the Three Edge Week in Review. Remember, all our videos are available on our Three Edge YouTube channel, as well as on our website at threeedgeam.com. So until next week, on behalf of Steve and everyone here at Three Edge, thank you for listening.